Well, hello there, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey, and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. Today, I'm gonna to be chatting with you about sewing machines. I'm gonna share a little bit about the equipment that I use in my own sewing practice, and I'm also gonna go over some things to consider if you are looking to buy a sewing machine, whether you are completely new to sewing, just getting started and not sure where to start, or whether you've been sewing for a while and are looking to upgrade your equipment. I started sewing from a very young age, probably around age six or seven. My grandmother taught me how to sew, and my mom was always like super encouraging of pretty much any creative endeavor that I had, so she would let me play with the sewing machine in our house, and I've just always been interested in making things and sewing and have a lot of experience with screwing up and breaking sewing machines, so, I have a lot of perspective from that regard too. I also started the business several years ago where I was selling handmade products. All of them were sewn by me. And so I have some experience too with selecting a sewing machine that really needs to be a workhorse machine and do some heavy duty projects. I've sewn everything from accessories, handbags to home decor. And now I do mostly garment sewing. I think the most important thing to consider when you're getting started is what is your goal with your sewing practice? If you're sewing garments and you're just getting started with apparel sewing, I think that most machines are going to do what you need them to do. And you can probably find something that's going to be pretty inexpensive to get started. There, there's a lot of different places where you can find just kind of a typical brother sewing machine, brother or singer. Those are two really popular brands that have a lot of options for kind of entry level sewing machines. And those are definitely great to start with and they'll do a lot. Those machines will actually do a lot. But if you're just getting started and you don't wanna invest a lot of money up front, those are definitely options that you can, you can pursue. Now, if you are kind of against buying a cheap sewing machine, which is totally noble and understandable, I would recommend going to your local thrift store. There are always sewing machines at the thrift store. Now the caveat here is you may get a sewing machine at the thrift store that might need repairs. Oftentimes repairs are going to cost more than the actual worth of the sewing machine. So again, you might be better off just buying a new sewing machine that actually works right out of the box. But that doesn't mean that you can't find a great sewing machine at the, at the thrift store. A lot of times too, the thrift store will have older sewing machines and sometimes older sewing machines can be actually better little workhorses than some of the newer machines because older machines have mostly metal parts on the interior, and so those parts are less likely to break or fall apart. Um, a lot of the newer sewing machines have a lot of plastic parts. Those parts can wear down really easily and can like, slip out of place a little bit more easily. So those are things to consider too. And a lot of times at the thrift store, you can find a machine that is made with really great parts. Even if you have to get it repaired, it might still be a better machine than some of the newer versions that are just not as well made. Another option, if you're just getting started, is to borrow a sewing machine. So if you have a friend or a family member that is willing to let you try out their machine and, and see if you're really interested in this hobby and you wanna take it further, that's definitely a route to go to that could cost you very little, if nothing, to try it out and get started. If you are at a point where you are ready to invest a little bit more in a sewing machine, do your research, but also keep in mind that there are literally thousands of options for sewing machines and most of them are gonna be pretty good. As long as you're not needing it for anything that's super heavy duty, most run of the mill sewing machines are gonna do what you need them to do. The type of sewing machine that you get is gonna depend on the types of projects that you wanna do. So whether you're doing home decor or quilting or bags and accessories, or you're sewing apparel, those are all kind of different applications that have different needs, and you're gonna to wanna to focus your search in that way. If you are ready to invest in something that's a little bit nicer, I think it's a really good idea and actually quite imperative that you try before you buy. So most sewing shops are gonna let you sit down and try out the sewing machine. You wanna just set aside some time, maybe a weekend or a couple of weekends, where you go in, you try out the different sewing machines, bring scraps of fabric that you can sew with that are gonna be similar to the types of materials that you think you'll be sewing with the most. Spend a week thinking on it and go back. Treat it like you're buying a car, because I will tell you this, when you go into a sewing shop, it is kind of like going to buy a car. They're gonna to try to get you into the most expensive sewing machine, and they put a lot of pressure on you to buy the really, really nice models of the sewing machines. You don't necessarily need to go to like the Cadillac of the sewing machines, but definitely sit down and try out different sewing machines to kind of figure out what you like. 
and make sure that what they're telling you about the machine actually is true and that the sewing machine is gonna do what you need it to do. And it's gonna feel good to you and it's gonna feel natural as you're sewing on it. Those are really important things. And you also wanna to talk to the folks at the sewing shop and kind of see what sort of deals they have for when you need to have your sewing machine repaired, what those costs are gonna be because you will eventually need to have the sewing machine repaired. In my experience, having repairs done usually runs about $100 per repair. Um, and that can get expensive, especially if you need to go in over and over again to have a repair done, which I have had to have done. So those are things to get to keep in mind too. So you also wanna keep in mind your price range, which I feel like is pretty obvious, but I'll go ahead and just talk about that. Um, for me, my first sewing machine that I bought for myself was not very expensive. It was a kind of, I think I maybe paid 80 or $90 for a brother machine that I bought at Walmart and I used it like crazy. I ran that thing into the ground and it only lasted me probably, I don't know, not even two years because this was back when I was selling products to sell and I got my first big wholesale order and it just killed my machine. So that machine, like it, bless its heart, it did a really good job, but it was really not equipped to do a lot of the heavy duty sewing that I was doing. And it didn't last me very long because I was using it, you know, for hours a day, day after day, weeks on end. So that definitely was not the best sewing machine for that use. Once that machine was kaput, I was kind of forced to go out and get a nicer machine. And that is how I ended up with my faff. It's either faff or foff. And I always feel kind of like an a-hole when I say foff, but I think it might be foff. Anyway, I got this foff machine. And this is actually a great machine. I really love this machine it has served me well. I've had it for probably, gosh, seven or eight years now. And this one cost me about $650 at the time, which was a big deal to me. That was actually like way more than I had ever spent on a sewing machine, but it's a really simple sewing machine. It sews really well. I've used this a lot for when I was sewing more heavy duty projects in the past when I had that business where I was selling wholesale but now I use it primarily for sewing apparel and it handles both lightweight fabrics and more heavy duty fabrics really well. Another thing too that I'll note, this is just my own personal preference, but I don't think you need a super duper fancy machine for most sewing applications. A lot of the newer machines now are computerized. They have a lot of little fancy thread cutting features and those are, those are nice features actually. Those are really great, but they're not absolutely necessary. One thing, if I ever do buy another machine, one thing that I probably will look for is um, like the leg lever that goes under the table that lifts and lowers the presser foot. I think that, that would be really helpful. But other than that, this one is, it's not computerized, it's very basic. It has some very basic zigzag stitches and straight stitches, that kind of thing. Um, I think for most, especially apparel sewing projects and actually most sewing projects, um, if you're just doing very basic sewing, you want a basic straight stitch that goes forward and back. You want to be able to adjust the stitch length and width, and you want to have a zigzag stitch because that'll allow you to sew both knits and wovens and will kind of give you more options for seam finishes if you're not ready to invest in a serge or two. Um, so this is really the only one that I can speak with any authority on as far as like a nicer higher end brand, but I've been very happy with it and I would definitely buy this machine again or something similar in this brand if I needed to upgrade my machine ever again. And I don't think they sell this particular version anymore, but I will put a link in the description to something that's really close to this. The first ever machine that I sewed on is actually behind me. I don't know if you can see it back there. This is a machine that was handed down to me from a family friend and it's a great machine. It's actually a Kenmore machine. I think it was made in the 60s or 70s. It's really sturdy. It's still in great condition. It still sews pretty well. One thing that I will note about some of these older machines in my experience sewing with some of the older machines is starting and stopping. It's a little bit slower to start and stop. This one's a little bit more immediate. So I guess the precision is a little bit better on my newer machine than it is on this older machine, but this older machine also can go through just about anything. I mean, it's a very, very strong and um, sturdy machine. Now I also have a serger. So this is the Baby Lock Imagine serger, and this was actually handed down to me from my mother-in-law. She bought it and just said she wasn't using it very much and wondered if I wanted it. And I was like, heck yeah, because Baby Lock is actually a really great brand of sewing machines and sergers. And I 
love this thing. When I first got this machine, I really didn't use it that much. I didn't really have as much use for it because the types of things that I was sewing, the seam finishes were not visible. So it just wasn't as important to finish those with surged edges. Um, but when I started sewing garments, I use this thing all the time now because it is so fantastic to have for garment sewing, especially when you're sewing with knits because when you're sewing this on a regular sewing machine, you're a little more limited on the types of stitches that you can use for knit fabrics with a regular sewing machine and get a really nice finish. A serger, on the other hand, is gonna really finish those edges nicely and make it possible to stretch the fabrics without breaking your stitches, which is fantastic for using the knits. So before I got this baby lock serger, I actually had a brother serger. I ended up gifting my brother serger to a friend, so I didn't have as much experience with that, but the, the little bit that I did use it, it, was, it worked great. It seemed like it was a great serger to start out with, um, but I've definitely had the most experience serging fabrics on this baby lock machine. And the last thing that I'll kind of touch on is maintenance. You're gonna eventually have to take this in and get it repaired, it just happens. So when I first got this little Foff machine, I actually had to take it in quite a bit and get it repaired because I was sewing a lot and I was just really hard on it and I wasn't keeping it clean. Now I am super diligent about keeping my machines clean because it does prevent you from having to get constant repairs. Every, you know, probably 10 hours of sewing, sometimes less. And when I was actually sewing a lot more, pretty much every day I would do this. I would go in and clean out the little crevices with my air can. And then I would put just a little drop of oil on the bobbin case just to kind of keep things running very smoothly. That helps a ton and it takes like two minutes to do it. You don't really need to oil any of the other parts of your sewing machine really ever because the manufacturer oils those and you shouldn't have to be messing with those parts. And if you do feel like those things need to be addressed, I would recommend taking it to a repair shop and having them address that. If there's any kind of problems with the inner workings of the machine, um, or you could try to teach yourself how to do that stuff. Um, I've tried that. I found that it's just less stressful to take it into someone who knows what they're doing. And I do the same thing for my serger, except I don't really find that I ever have to oil the serger. And I'm pretty sure that my manual tells me not to oil it because of the way that it's constructed. The mechanisms inside are kind of self-contained, so you shouldn't have to put oil in there. I could be wrong about that. Don't hold me to it, people. Um, but yeah, basically for my serger, all I do is occasionally go in there with the air can and kind of clean all the dust out of the little crevices and keep it clean that way. And related to maintenance, always hang on to your sewing machine manuals. If you don't have your sewing machine manual, maybe you found your sewing machine at a thrift store or it was handed down to you, you can usually find them online. If you Google search the type of sewing machine and the model that you have, you can usually either find it for free online or find a place that sells it for pretty cheap for just a few bucks. They will help you with everything from how to sew a buttonhole to basic sewing machine maintenance um, and then just basic troubleshooting too. Like the, ma the manual for your sewing machine is actually extremely helpful and you always wanna hang on to those. Okay, I think that is all I have for you today. This was kind of a more broad discussion. So let me know in the comments below if there are any questions that you have about selecting a sewing machine or upgrading your equipment or even just getting started with sewing that I didn't cover here and maybe that can be something I cover in a future video. I really love talking about this stuff, so I'm happy to do more videos that go a little bit deeper on certain topics if those, if those are things that you are interested in. So definitely let me know. Also, let us know if you have a sewing machine that you just absolutely love, what kind of sewing you typically do, and uh, yeah, maybe that would be helpful to someone else who is, is doing research right now and maybe stumbled across this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you being here. And if you did enjoy it, be sure to hit subscribe. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Bye.